So audience, now we have to start our new module. That is module seven. Module seven is regarding storage, Azure storage. Okay, so lesson one, uh, there is a six lesson again, long module it is. Last lesson is about module seven and uh, that is for lab and review query. Lesson five is managing storage. Lesson four, files and file sync services, security of the storage blob storage storage account so audience before we go to the slide let me go to the portal and uh, we have to start with the demonstration because uh, storage and virtual machine these two modules something which is if we go with the lab uh, so if you go with the slide we are not getting that much of information but if you go with the slide we will actually understand that how does this storage and the virtual machine is working okay so let me go to the portal directly audience in in storage of azure storage we have Siddharth, are you sharing something it seems not it ah uh, my my screen is shared man wait for a while let me we share it. Is it now visible? Not yet. I'm not sure how about others. Audience, can you I'm see? Able to see yeah, I'm able to see your uh, portal.azure.com. Yeah. Yes, yes, we are able to see. Yes, I think everyone can see okay. this. Uh, so please, I think uh, you rejoin. Yeah, if you region, I think yeah, that would be good. Okay, in Azure, the storage we are actually using that is a generic storage. This storage is not related with any specific service or any specific reason. This storage we can use for multiple reasons. This storage we are going to use for our uh, data storage activity. Okay, like we can store movies, music, documents, anything. We can use the storage for store our database oriented stuff. We can use this storage for development purpose. Okay, so this is the generic storage we are using. To use the storage in Azure, we have to create a storage account. Okay, when we create the storage account, there we have to mention that what type of storage we need, what type of services, what type of facilities or characteristics uh, will be available that will define the types of storage when we define it. Uh, during the creation process okay so everything that we have to mention during our storage creation those characteristics will be available after creating it okay let's see <clears throat> so if i write storage Okay. I have three storage account, but really I don't know that I, when I have created it. This one created, I think today in morning we have created it. This is a storage account. Okay. <clears throat> and these two storage account where and how I have created that I really forget it. Anyway. Let me create another storage account. So this is Azure Pass resource group. Let me choose the resource group. Storage account name that should be small letter like uh, storage broad SACT like this okay location these are the view these are the information which is common for all services that we try to deploy using Azure portal or from any other SDK in Azure performance standard and premium if I choose premium then the backend storage the uh, backend of the storage service it is using as SSD 
Okay, so we will use a uh, higher throughput, low latency activities. But if you choose standard, then it will be using magnetic, it, 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 it is using magnetic disk in behind, right? So probably you will get a, you will get a latency when you access the storage account or storage services. So choice is yours, choice is yours where you have to, uh, which one you have to choose to create your storage account. Now audience, with the performance, storage account kind and the replication, these two are very much important. Account kind is saying that we have three types of account, blob storage, storage which is version one and another storage which is version two. Now let me start with the storage which is version one. Storage version one is a legacy storage. Okay. It is doesn't support custom domain name. It, does, it doesn't support encryption. Encryption is a process through which we can secure our storage based data with our own certificates or own keys. So those advanced concepts is not supported by this storage. Okay. But whatever the storage service we want to use like container storage service, file storage service, everything. We can upload the VHD and everything. We can do this using this version one. Version two is the latest technology of the storage where all the characteristics like custom domain, encryption, okay, or, or any uh, in future, whatever uh, new concepts Microsoft will add with the storage, all will be available with the version two. So Microsoft is always sending, always saying that you have to, uh, customer have to create a storage version two if they have any requirement for the storage, okay. Now last option is blob storage. Blob storage is same like your storage version one, but here in the blob storage, we cannot upload VHD file. Yes, in storage, we can upload our on-prem VHD file if it is required. But in, if you create a storage account with the type of blob storage, then this particular storage will not allow you to upload VHD file. Even if you allow, means if you if you able to upload the VHD file, that VHD file is not going to treat it as a VHD file. I mean that you cannot create a virtual machine based on this particular uh, blob storage VHD file. No, you cannot do so. Okay. So there is a three kind of storage account we have, right? So choice is yours, which one you have to select. But obviously choice is always depends on the requirement and plan. So for demonstration purpose, I'm choosing storage version one. Now replication. Audience, the replication is very important concepts. How Microsoft provides security to your storage. If data center down, uh, let's say I have chosen East US 2. So if that particular data center down, how my storage data is available to me. That will also down or I will get my data from somewhere else. Microsoft will, Microsoft will organize some replication automatically and I will get my data back any moment whenever I want to do so. So replication actually answer for it. Replication tell you that, okay, no problem. If your primary location down, you can have the secondary location from where you can get it back. So you can see there is a different replication option available. LRS, ZRS, GORS, or GRS, and read, read access, geo redundant storage. So le let's start with the local redundant storage or LRS. LRS is saying that when you create a storage account and you mention replication is a LRS, your one storage account will create three copy. All three copy will be placed under the same data center, but in a different storage cluster. Every data center have the storage cluster and under each cluster, there is a pool of data, uh, there is a pool of storages, right? So when you create, when you create your storage account with the type of LRS as a replication option, then your account will create three copy and three copy will be placed in a different cluster of the storage present in the same data center. So if data center down, then you may have a problem that you can lost your data. But okay, Mike, it is never happened. Microsoft have the, some backup plan, some backup uh, uh, replication options available. You can get your data back. But LRS actually not providing any protection based on data center issue. Okay. Now geo redundant. Geo redundant in saying, sometime it happened that under one region, 
you may have multiple data center placed in different location of that region and all the data center are far away from each other so these data centers multiple data center present in a single region is called availability zone so zone redundant storage means when you use this option as a replication option so it will again create a three copy but that three copy will be placed in a different different data, uh, data center of the microsoft azure and under this under those data center it will be again placed in a particular storage cluster so zone redundant is telling you that okay three copy i am creating of your storage account and each copy will be placed in a different data center so if one data center down you have another two data center from where you can get your data back that is called zone redundancy or zrs grs grs is saying that okay now we can create six copy of your storage account three copy will be placed in your primary location in my case my primary location is east us or east us2 and three copy will be there in the east us2 and rest of the three copy will be there in a peered region of my east us2 now it may happen that my east us2 region have six peer region sometime it happen so which peer region microsoft will choose to store your rest of the three copy of your storage account that is behind the scene that microsoft will decide automatically we cannot decide it so if we choose geo redundant we have to sure that okay three copy of my storage account placed in my primary region and rest of the three copy will be in the secondary region that should be peer region so if my primary region down i can get my data back from the secondary region that obviously but no in case of grs the secondary region is only apply or it's only using by the microsoft for recreate your primary location so secondary region can be used as a dr dr region but there is an option where microsoft can trigger failover if microsoft trigger failover then your secondary region become active and you your application or individuals can access the secondary region but as a read access manner there is no write access option available so in case of grs the secondary region by default not accessible but if microsoft wish can trigger the failover and secondary region can be accessed but in a read only manner in case of read access geo redundant solution in case of read access same way six copy will be there three copy in the primary and the rest of the three copy in the secondary so when primary down the three copy which is there in the secondary region can be accessible by your <coughs> sorry can be accessed by your application without triggering failover by microsoft so secondary region will be available as a <coughs> uh, as a data access point in case of regrs okay but yes that should be in a read only mode you cannot do any modification to the storage account that you are accessing from the secondary region in case of regrs so so if you need a more secure or uh, more stable uh, solution of your storage account then you should choose regrs okay and read access geo redundant storage service so the three copy you have stored in a primary region again it will be further divided into three different zone of that region if zone is supported by that region okay so these are the things uh, you have to consider before you go for the storage creation what is this uh, uh, sujit what is that zero zone redundant zero zero redundant okay so you, you, so yeah that, that's what i was telling you mm -hmm. six no, copy it is created. yeah zero six copy okay six copy it is creating three copy will be there in a primary region okay now the mm -hmm. three copy which is there in the primary region again it will again divide into three data center each data center is called zone so the three copy which is present in your Sing, uh, in your primary region let's say in east us2 so when it is go inside it again it will be placed in a three different data center so in primary region if one data center down still you have another two data center from where you can get your data back 
so that mm -hmm. is called geo zone redundant storage okay so okay. this six copy actually this six copy will be placed in a different different region but and also it is different different zone zone means the zone can have single or multiple data center of a region yeah okay same okay. way okay. ra grs ra gzrs is also same secondary region which is storing your rest of the three copy again further it is divided into three different zone and all the zone can be accessed in a read only manner but okay. ra yeah tell me tell me no in this case uh, it would be a, a triggered failover or automatic failover in case of geo zone redundant microsoft will trigger the failover but if it is rag rag zrs then automatic failover process will happen oh, okay so that is the major difference okay yeah okay. so in automatic failover the secondary copies also will act as the data access point correct data access point but you cannot do any kind of write or modification right. option okay, okay. okay. Yeah. thank you sir you are welcome so access tier audience access tier means how do you access your storage account how frequent the storage account has been accessed by you or your application that defines this access tier if it is hot access tier that means your storage account is getting accessed very frequently like your application is continuously accessing your storage account for some kind of data so you have to choose access tiers hot so microsoft will charge you based on the storage or based on the volume you have been occupied by storing your data if it is hot tier since transaction rate is high but still microsoft will not charge you for the transaction rather it is charging you for the storage you have been occupied for your data whereas if you choose cool tier then your storage account is not going to access very frequently so in that case microsoft will charge you for the transaction yes it is opposite where transaction is very heavy where microsoft charging based on the volume it is occupied where transaction rate is very low in that case microsoft will charge you for the transaction only so access tier defines that how frequent your storage account will be accessing right so for production environment where you need a, a frequent accessibility then you should go for the hot tier now let me go to the networking so where i was i was saying that how do you access how uh, individuals or applications are accessing your storage account so you have to mention that option here either you have to mention a particular private endpoint like a specific network of your virtual network specific ip address range or it could be specific public ip address range also you can mention in a public endpoint area but if you choose all networks public endpoint all networks that means everyone can access your storage account but yes there is some kind of authentication uh, related things are there if you authorize everyone everyone can access your storage otherwise you can provide protection to the authentication part also that we will see so now we can provide security to our storage account even it is available to everyone but still there is a security so uh, okay let me go with the public endpoint will with all networks advanced now uh, your storage account is enabled with https that is your security okay azure file share we will discuss later data protection blobs of delete blobs of delete is the concept where if you delete some data from your container storage service again i'm repeating if you want to delete if you have deleted some data from your container storage service uh, area you can recall it back there is a retention time okay you can fix up the retention time based on that the deleted data will be there in the container itself so when you delete it it is actually logically deleted but not a physical deletion so within 7 days if you wish you can recall it back so it is uh, again extra creating a extra storage space or it is using extra storage space in behind okay so anyway either you can enable it or disable it let me go with that default with default time period data lake storage service uh, 
cannot be enabled simultaneously. So data lake storage service, really, it is not my uh, discussing matter because I'm a more about administration. So database person can go with that. Before we go to the tag, let me create an account. Validate successfully. So deployment is underway. When deployment is running audience, let me go to the slide and at least see the first lesson. After, after uh, completion of this uh, creation process, we will be back here and we'll see other demonstrations. So Azure storage account, this is the modules uh, lesson information what we are going to discuss. Storage account, what is storage account? Storage account services, account kind, strategies of the replication, accessing storage, securing storage endpoints. Okay. Azure storage service, as I told you that Azure storage service is a generic storage service where you can upload any kind of document. Okay. Uh, that could be your uh, movies, that could be your normal documents, that could be any type of specific database, table, table information, so many uh, VHD files. So everything you can upload. Definitely there is a different service available under the storage account. So based on the service, you can uh, upload your data. So three categories of the storage you have, storage for virtual machine, yes, we can do so. Means we can upload the VHD file, unstructured data. We have a container storage service where we can upload the unstructured data. Structured data like SQL DB, Cosmos DB, we have a table database, okay, where we can use it. But table is uh, not a good candidate for SQL DB because table data, table storage service is not supporting RDBMS. For SQL DB, we can create a separate uh, storage, not for SQL actually. Table is using for uh, Cosmos DB and uh, this kind of databases, big data Hadoop kind of things you can use for the table storage service, not for SQL data because SQL database supporting schema and relational database management system, which is table storage service not supporting. Standard storage block by magnetic drive, HDD, we can use as a backend storage uh, infrastructure or we can use SSD as our backend storage infrastructure. So option is with us. Standard is for normal magnetic drive and premium is always go with the SSD. So these are the four storage service you will get when you create a storage account. Containers, file share, tables, and queues. Containers is the area where you can upload any kind of data. That is called unstructured data. No matter what it is, no matter what size it is. Obviously there is a particular size limit, okay, but uh, the type of the store that type of the data could be anything file share this is the storage service where you can store the data and you can distribute the data or you can share the data among some uh, particular group or particular individuals okay depends so there we can use a uh, file share storage service we can use to distribute the files okay or share the files only so it is using smb version 3 protocol in behind uh, of the file share storage service table Table supporting uh, to store the databases. The database have the proper structure like row and columns is there, but it is not supporting RDBMS. That's why it is not a good storage service for SQL database because SQL is basically based on RDBMS. Okay, that's why you cannot store any SQL related data here. And Q, Q is using for the development purpose inter-service communication like in development we are triggering some function we are triggering some automation code and all those stuff so when we design the triggering definitions and all we are using queues queues is supporting message uh, service to service inter-message uh, communication okay so as the administrator we are sticking to file share and the containers because tables and queues, which is something related with the database and development, 
So developers, when you do the, do any kind of developing course of Azure, you can go inside the queues and you can use the queues. Storage account kind, we have a blob storage. Blob storage, as I told you, that is a, a type of general version one or storage version one doesn't support any uh, BHD file. Replication option, you have a LRS, GRS, RS, GRS option available. Storage version one, every type of storage service, you can get it. Supported here, standard and premium. We have a HDD, we have a SSD support also. Replication also, same thing. Version two, we have all support, all the uh, latest technology, latest replication option, whatever we have, everything is supported by version two. Blob Blob storage, only supporting Blob Blobs and Append Blobs only. It is a premium only supported. So the change in the Blob storage is, uh, Blob storage is only supporting standard, but whereas Blob Blob is supporting premium. Rest of the things are the same. Okay, replication, it is only supporting LRS. This is file storage, only file sharing activity you can do. So you don't need to have, you maybe you are not using queues, blobs and tables. In that case, you just create a storage account for file only. So that also you can use it. So these are the different storage accounts you can choose. But the location you are choosing, based on the location, the storage account type is evaluating. Every location doesn't show you every type of storage account. Okay. The location makes difference when you choose the storage account type. Replication strategies, as we have defined, LRS is creating three copies. ZRS is also creating three copies, but placed in a different zone. Geo redundant, creating six copies, three copy in primary, and the rest of the three copies will be the secondary. Secondary is always uh, not accessible in case of GRS, but using failover, it can be. RAGRS secondary uh, region is also accessible region, but as a read only matter. Geo zone redundant, the replication or the copies of your storage account will be also present in a zone under the region, primary and secondary both. Read access secondary region can be accessible, but the three copies will be placed in a different zone okay, uh, of a particular region. For storage account connectivity, you will get a URL of every storage service you are trying to access, container, table, queue, and file share. So URL something, your name will be changed, then is a, something which is fixed, port.windows.net. Port.windows.net is everywhere. Then based on the service you are using, file, queue, table, that option will appear. And then before that, you have the name of your storage account. So that is the name how do you access your storage account securing okay you can select it you can uh, allow everyone to access it or you can select a network a particular virtual network or particular prefix or particular public ip address prefix also you can mention so you can access you can make your data communication secure or you can you can uh, enable encryption also to, to secure your data present in your storage so before we go in this area let me open it So my deployment is done. Now if I go to resource. So there is a four storage service available, containers, file share, tables, and queues. So as I told you that container is a storage service where you can upload any type of data, no matter what it is. So if you want to upload the data here, you just create a container. Provide the name of the container. Okay. And there is the access level of the container. This access level defines that uh, file level and folder level permission. If you do consider that you have a folder and under the folder you have a five files. 
so you have a full access to the folder but you have only read access to the file then you can open the file uh, sorry you can open the folder you can open the file also but you cannot modify the file though you have the full permission to the folder like read and write permission but since you have only read permission to the file you cannot read it same thing so under container if i want to create any data okay i need to follow this uh, folder and file concepts in terms of uh, security who can access it private means there is no accessibility to the outsiders blob means this one only this one so if i create a container container would be you can say the uh, the place where we can upload the data so if i say the blob permission that means i have a permission to see all the containers but i don't have any permission to open the containers and see my data so choice is yours which permission you need to assign if you say blob that means i can open this container service and i can see the list of containers available but i cannot open any containers inside it because i have a permission to the blob only previously this storage service name was blob service okay but now it they have changed the name they have mentioned it containers but previously it was showing blob now if you choose container you are choosing container means the containers you are using all containers can be opened by you and you can see the data which is present inside that container so if i say container name is fraud container so container has created so if i have a permission on the blob so i can see the name of the container but i cannot open the container and i cannot see the data so let me open the container and if i wish i can upload the data here so there is a option called upload when you upload you can choose the file right but before you choose the file you have to select the type of data you would want to upload if you want to upload normal documents movies music anything so that is comes under the blog blob but if you choose to page blob that means you are supposed to upload on premises vhd file because page blob is the blob that will support vhd data but if you said append blob append blob is uh, allow the allow you to upload log related data like you have a file which is carrying lots of log data for any uh, for your customer or for any service present in on prem you can upload the data there so what type of data you want to upload based on which you have to type the blob type okay so since i am not uh, uploading any append blob or or log related data or any kind of phd so i will go for the blog blob once you check this block size is this one access tier is hot i can i can support or i can create a folder also inside the container choice is me anyway now i can open the file so let's see let me open this one after selecting this one i can do the upload so once it is upload you can see the data here how do you access it you can access just click on here there is a url using url you can access it just do the copy see 
that particular file has downloaded. But so using URL, you can easily download the file by by using the URL that uh, Microsoft has provided to you. Okay. If you wish, you can change the tier. Change the tier. You can delete the file. Okay. You can download it directly from here. So choice is yours. Now, if I delete this particular file, So you can open it. See, when I see, uh, when I say show deleted object, so the data I have deleted that was not really deleted. It was showing, it was just a logically deletion. Hello. The other se baat kiya, usne bola ki us server abhi ban kiya usne. Okay, iske liye wo pro. Anil ji. Anil ji, shayad. On ko kham ko kar dete mute. Okay. So see, the data I have deleted it. Now it is again showing because I have I have opened this option show deleted of blobs and all. So what I can do? I can, if I wish, I can recall it back. So seven days it will be there. I can undelete it whenever I need to have it. So I can restore it back. This is called blob soft delete. If blob soft delete was disabled, this option was not unavailable. Uh, this was this option was not available to me. Okay. Now. This is called containers. We have a custom domain for the storage account. Any versioning support, anything, any versioning or any kind of updates it is required or the backend storage cluster is required that all managed by the Microsoft. You are not doing anything. So see, you are using platform as a service right so since plas platform related anything which is required that is all done by the microsoft you are not doing anything you are just responsible for your data that you are uploading here but rest of the task like storage server upgradation management patching everything done by the microsoft if you need a older version of uh, the file if you have uploaded it everything will be there and if you have opened the blobs of delete, then till seven days, you can have your old data. You can, you can get back your old data. But after seven days, whatever you have deleted, that will be permanently deleting from the storage account. But till seven days, it is there because I have made the timing seven days, but you can increase it. I made seven days, but you can say uh, 365 days. What if save file is uploaded? Will it main version? Just wait for a while. Older version of the file, okay. Got it. We'll check the same name. We'll maintain the version. Yeah, the data you are uploading, whatever the size, whatever the stuff is there, that is still there. 
but if you, if you think that uh, version of the database no that kind of version is not uh, showing here so it's all about the data you are uploading in the blob that's why if you need a versioning now if you uh, i can understand uh, abhishek that you are talking about the sql database versioning and all those things as i told you for sql database you need a different storage account but this storage account is something which is generic like you upload your resume for example so if you upload your resume later if you want to update the resume and you want to again upload you cannot do so the old one will be replaced okay that could be that could be yeah that could be so any kind of your versioning maybe a uh, same file with a different version you try to upload if it is support then obviously otherwise it will tell you that file is already present this kind of things so it is uploaded again if you choose the same file that was my previous same file there is an option override if files already exist if you do not enable this option not no override process will happen see abhishek there is an option override if it if file is ex already exist otherwise you just go with that and if you do so then what will happen the latest information will be updated with with the old one otherwise both will be keep here so nothing will be lost you can go back to your previous version you can go back come back to your new version anywhere you can do this so option is there yeah it maintains the version in this way not in a direct way it is saying that um, the versioning or something but it can keep uh, keep your data for all the all the data you want to store it that could be some kind of same name or different name uh, but all the data is there unless you want to do so yeah okay now let me go to the okay so so you have a custom domain also if you wish you can add the custom domain for your storage account domain name what cloudsol.com so you have to update fail you have to uh, could not be verified the domain name is not yet verified remember yesterday we have uh, changed the verification code we uh, deleted this okay so that we will do it later custom domain we can add it means uh, we can go to the overview part what is the full name okay sorry containers under the containers copy the url and dns
so where my dns is that time we need to check anyway so if i have a dns server then i think in msdn platform i have that yeah cloudsol.ml so i have to uh, put it here into the record set www c name okay i think www already taken yeah there is a record www i can choose something else uh data c name record and paste the enter this one you can you can use this way also and let us number should be separated from other level period okay sorry So this way you can create alias record in your internal DNS and if you have any DNS delegation, you can further verify it and resolve it. Okay. Data C name storage, blob, dot container and all those stuff, you can use it. Okay. Now, let me go to the storage container and moving towards the file share. You can create a file share. File share the storage service that you can use to distribute the file for a specific group of people or a particular specific uh, individual, depends. So this is using just as a file share location. Like if you have a file server in your data center, okay, you can uh, you can provide access to uh, this file share server. And uh, so your employees can directly access the file server and can they can download the files, they can use the files, right? So same kind of you have a storage and whatever data you are putting inside the storage, that data is, data is accessible by anyone as a file share. So to file to share the data, what protocol it is using behind? It is using SMB3 protocol. So it is a separate storage service, you can say. Let's say uh, broad file share. You can provide the quota. So uh, audience, uh, the maximum size of the data that your storage account can store, I if I'm not wrong, that would be 200 TB, the maximum size of the storage account. And your file share is using one TB. The maximum size of your file share is one TB. Okay. So I have created the file share. Do this. So I have an option called connect. What does it mean? Connect will allow that you can create a map network drive with your local computer using this particular PowerShell command. Like uh, we are accessing remote location disk, we are accessing remote location folder by using map drive. Okay, so same kind of things also we can do here. Sorry audience. Let me change the drive letter name. Okay, and copy this one. Open PowerShell.
and do the best. Hey, hi, Sujit. Yes. Uh, do we have any prerequisites to run these commands? Because we have tried this a lot of times on our VM, but these mm -hmm. commands never go through. So is there any specific port that has to be enabled or something of that sort? Or Port number 445. You have to make it enable in your uh, firewall. If it is not enabled in your firewall or in your local machine firewall, that uh, mm -hmm. command will fail. Uh, anything except that? Any PowerShell module or something that has to be installed? PowerShell module? Mm, I don't think see any kind of... Uh, no, no, no specific modules is required. Just check that okay. what type of error message you are getting. Uh, it fails at connecting itself. Fails at connecting itself, na? then it's a problem. Uh, yeah, the, the first problem. command. Okay, here, TCP. The first command, uh, dollar yeah, connect connection. test result. Yeah. Yeah, test connection. Check your, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, uh, check, the, check the virtual network. Check the virtual network of the storage account that it is, I think in virtual network, they have a NSG file. We have NSG. to allow it. Yeah. Some kind of rules has been mentioned there. Test connection is yeah. actually IP config some echo message it is not probably supporting in the nsg they have blocked it okay okay so I and, to do. Uh, one more thing so when we mount this so mm -hmm. it gets mounted only for bad user profile so what if i want to mount it for all the user profiles i mean whichever users logs in on that machine i want that to be mounted you want that to be mounted. Yeah, uh, I mean, I mount once and that should reflect for all the users. Okay. You can you can do this using group policy, na? domain group policy. That is the only solution, right? Yeah. Actually, so we had raised it in it and all. Mm -hmm. And they suggested us the same thing to our domain, this group policy, group OU. Uh, absolutely because uh, okay. if you do so now if you go with the group policy then you, you don't have to machine dependency user dependency no matter where user is sitting every time that particular drive will be there with that user and the device and we would need bad file for that right yeah okay true okay you create a bad file run those things you can you can uh, create a bad file uh, from the powershell also by, means PowerShell script can be converted into bat file, not directly from PowerShell, but there is some tool actually. You can do so. Okay. Okay. Fine. I'll explain. Yeah. Thanks. Sure, man. So yeah, audience. So my drive has been mounted. So if I go to my file explorer and uh, let me check with see plot file share is open see this is the plot file share with the drive letter x okay so if i wish i can create any data here i can create any file anything if i wish to have hello dot txt like this
and now if you go to cloud your portal just do the refresh maybe the screen Yeah, see hello.txt. I mentioned hello.txt, so it has taken the extension automatically. Hello.txt.txt, anything. So the data is now available. So every time I don't need to open my portal to upload data and distribute it, uh, as as we have uh, we were discussing that we can distribute for a specific group of people, specific individual uh, machine. We can do so by using this uh, PowerShell command lets and all everywhere that file that you are uploading okay uh, will be visible but yes 445 port you need to open and smb protocol 3 you have to open otherwise your connection will get failed you cannot map this drive in your local machine is there any time limit set by microsoft for this uh, connected drive because uh, i we have observed that after uh, 12 hours or something this uh, drive will automatically disconnect it yeah that uh, there is a 12 hour limitations means uh, when you when you are working with the drive it is not like that you are working with the drive and only 12 hours you can do so but whenever you leave it idle okay let's say you have worked last three days it is working fine but after three days you stop working and keep it like keep it like this mm -hmm. so automatically after 12 hours your communication will get failed for the security for internal okay. security so just do the refresh or sometime you have to open the portal and uh, do the refresh then again the communication will get established so is there any way out to uh, you know to uh, stop this disconnection or something mm -hmm. because uh, last time uh, when we have tried to uh, you know copy our uh, on prem data to this file storage Mm -hmm. That time we have observed this issue that after 12 hours, the drive will disconnect automatically. Mm, I don't think from portal it is possible to do. Wait for a while. Let me check. That is one one day. One day uh, they are providing accessibility if it is idle. Uh, the data is writing on that particular storage, but. Uh, as per policy that after 12 hours it's automatically disconnect yes wait for a while which one i have created storage let me check 